Today, we're going to be discussing the silent killer in bodybuilder. And that is going to be the cardiovascular implications that PEDs bring about and some of the considerations around managing that so that you can make sure to continue to your bodybuilding career over the long term and manage your health. All right, so the primary problem with PEDs is going to be its influence on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now, PEDs elevate risks in multiple areas. We're typically considering the primary ones being cardiovascular, kidney, liver, and brain. But the one that we're going to primarily be talking about today is PD's negative effect outcomes that come from influencing the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And I pulled this line from a paper just to kind of give you guys an idea that when we're considering this influence of renin angiotensin aldosterone system, we're typically talking about the promotion of water and sodium reabsorption that occurs. And so when we look at this, we're going to see some potential negative outcomes like increased oxidative stress, elevated inflammatory cytokines, and potentially even stuff like fibrosis of the kidneys, which when we look at this, we're going to be just considering the net influence of PDs on oxidative stress, inflammatory cytokines, and some of the negative adaptations that can occur uh, with PDs in play. So when we start to look into cardiovascular-based side effects, the first one that we're going to be considering is left ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, and looking at some of the structural change that can happen to the left ventric ventricle uh, over a long period of time of PED use. Now, AUSE is well associated with any version of myocardial hypertrophy. And when we're considering it, we're typically looking at two main inputs. First one, obviously being renin angiotensin aldosterone system, as mentioned before, uh, but also antigen receptors on cardiac myocytes. And over time, with chronic use and exposure and, and lack of management, we can actually see not only hypertrophy, but fibrosis in some of these cardiac tissues. And ultimately, the main reason that this becomes an issue is it starts to affect the heart's contractility and performance. And where you see this lower performance is often in that ejection fraction from the left ventricle that can be picked up on an echocardiogram. And so this is gonna be the primary number one consideration for uh, cardiovascular risk with PED use, uh, going to be probably the most common. Uh, and then the second one we're going to be looking at is right ventricular strain. So this is is not as well documented or, or studied as the, the left ventricular hypertrophy. But there does seem to be some evidence of diastolic dysfunction uh, within the right ventricle within AAS users. And so this is also going to be a consideration that we want to be looking at with our, our testing, especially within our echocardiograms that we should be doing to kind of manage over the long haul. With those being the primary side effects that we want to consider, we, we might want to walk through what the diagnosis process kind of looks like for uh, cardiomyopathy and start to kind of understand why it's important to have a medical practitioner involved within your bodybuilding process to kind of help you manage and ensure that over the long term you're not creating adaptations that are going to have negative outcomes. And so obviously the first step is going to be the thorough history of PD use obviously needing to find a practitioner or cardiologist that is going to be comfortable with your PED use and help you manage it um, is a, a big step in the right direction. Now, this might take going to two or three cardiologists before you find someone that will help you manage it. Uh, but oftentimes you will end up finding someone that will go to bat for you and kind of help you with that management process. Now, typically the next step is going to be like less invasive versions of testing. So that's going to be lab testing. Uh, typically, we would be looking at CBCs, lipid testing. We can do cardiac enzyme testing uh, as like an initial pulling of lab work in order to start to manage this. Now, obviously, lab work is going to be a part of our process typically every 12 to 15 weeks. So we will want to make sure that we're, we're keeping these in our lab work pools just to keep a close eye on it. Uh, because as we go into the third one, these are going to be less frequent, but these are going to be the imaging modalities that we can use within the diagnostic process or the, the management process to prophylactically assess our risk for cardiovascular event during our time using PEDs. Now, there's there's two main forms of, of imaging that will typically be used, uh, typically either like a transthoracic echocardiography or uh, a transesophageal version of that, um, which would be like our echocardiograms that we're going to be getting on a yearly basis, preferably if possible, if not every two years, uh, to check overall 
uh, heart function, uh, structure, and kind of how we're doing in that front. And then the second one that would be commonly used would be CCTAs. And this would be any version of angiography. Uh, very commonly one that's kind of associated with this is calcium scoring. And so this would be something that you would be doing with your cardiologist. Now, and this is where having a cardiologist in your corner is very important because they can help you with how often you need to be testing. And not only that, but reading the results and seeing how high your risk actually is for cardiovascular event. And so this is where if you're proactive about it and prophylactically manage this with the practitioner, it can really, really help your, your outcome over the long haul in potentially managing this at a higher level. Now, there's typically going to be some medications that can help with this. A lot of these are centered around blood pressure management uh, because chronically elevated blood pressure is one of the primary reasons that we see some of these negative adaptations that were discussed in the earlier slides. Um, and the first two are going to be just common blood pressure medication uh, ones that we talk about in either beta blockers or some sort of angiotensin system mediation. So a beta blocker is going to work by lowering the heart rate through blocking the effects of adrenaline or noradrenaline. Uh, some of the issues that you see with this is going to be uh, negative outcomes for people who have athlete-based goals from a, a metabolic perspective. Now, some of the issues that you'll see uh, for this are going to be around people who have performance-based goals. Sometimes beta blockers can cause issues for people with those performance-based goals. It does seem that nabivalol is, can be a, a fit that has application within performance-based athletes, uh, but this would be a discussion with your cardiologist to decide kind of what the best form of mediation would be. Now, now going into the next class, I've written angiotensin system inhibitors. This is going to be actually the most common form of blood pressure medication that is prescribed for PED users. And that is going to be because of its primary change in the, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now, these are going to be your ARBs or your ACE inhibitors, which are ultimately going to work through lowering renin release and lowering overall angiotensin production of angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2 to help mediate some of the potential negative outcomes that can be seen with angiotensin elevation. With PDs in play, angiotensin elevation is going to occur, and there, there does seem to be some evidence for potential for fibrosis within angiotensin elevation, even if blood pressure is not fully elevated. So this would be where you might want to be considering this as a prophylactic, but it's certainly something to discuss with your medical practitioner. The next one you'll commonly see potentially suggest would be mineral corticoid receptor antagonists. Um, obviously not as common as like some of the other medications that we talked about in the first slide, uh, but these are going to be aimed at lowering angiotensin's influence of the mineral corticoid receptor and, and ultimately trying to prevent cardiac remodeling, decreasing inflammation, and even has some implications for lowering proteinuria. Now, the first two medication options that we covered in the first slide are, are fairly common. Uh, somewhere in the, the four classes of blood pressure medications, oftentimes you'll see dual therapy used in order to kind of manage blood pressure. Um, so the use of either the beta blocker or the ACE slash ARB in conjunction with another class of blood pressure medications. Uh, but some other ones that, that aren't often discussed are going to be mineral corticoid receptor antagonists. Um, these are going to be working through inhibiting the action of aldosterone at the mineral corticoid receptor, ultimately trying to just lower its effects in potentially cardiac remodeling um, and improving overall inflammation status. So this can be a consideration for kind of managing some of these cardiovascular based side effects, but it's certainly something that you would want to discuss with your practitioner, whether it fits your level of risk or not. And the final one to consider, which is probably the, the least common just in its necessity or application within bodybuilding athletes is going to be sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitors. Um, these are going to be working through reducing renal reabsorption of, of glucose, ultimately lowering blood glucose without effect on insulin. Uh, so it doesn't always have an application within bodybuilders, uh, but it, it is something that may be brought up and, and you should inform yourself about whether this fits your application uh, and discuss this with your practitioner. Now, one of the best things, and this is kind of something I put on this is to consider is the removal of AAS can be a large contributor to dialing back uh, any negative cardiovascular adaptations that have occurred over your years of usage. Well, we have seen some evidence of improvement of cardiac parameters with removal of AAS. Now, it is debatable whether actual remodeling can occur, uh, but for someone like myself who spent uh, 10 years bodybuilding and have removed uh, any influence outside of clinical TRT, uh, I have seen some, some pretty large positive adaptations in removal of any of the negative 
adaptations that had occurred during my bodybuilding career. And so uh, reduction in left ventricular wall thickening, any of at any negative effects of like the ejection fraction. Uh, and so this is something that is possible for you. Uh, so this could be where if you're going down the path of higher and higher risks within your bodybuilding career, one of the best ways to potentially start to reverse it is just to simply remove uh, the influence of PEDs. Now, obviously not the option if you're going to be pursuing bodybuilding, uh, but is certainly something to consider. Now, there are some prevention strategies that we should have in place uh, just to kind of prophylactically help us manage this. Obviously, the lifestyle ones are going to be consistent cardiovascular activity, uh, high nutrient density, ensuring that we're getting plenty of micronutrients alongside our macronutrients, and then ultimately managing our stress and our sleep uh, as like the primary lifestyle habits that are going to contribute to us potentially not getting some of these negative ad negative adaptations that PEDs can bring about. Blood pressure management is going to be the next one. Uh, obviously, probably the primary consideration within negative cardiovascular outcomes within PED users. So this would be where you would work with your practitioner to find the blood pressure medication or medications if you're using a dual therapy in order to manage this for yourself. Now, obviously, cardiovascular activity and some of the lifestyle factors can contribute to where your blood pressure trends are at, uh, but it's really good to consider prophylactic usage um, in order to manage this for you. And then finally, ensuring that you're getting regular testing. This would be consistent lab work, lab work being every 12 to 15 weeks, and then also ensuring that you're getting your echocardiograms and your calcium scorings in order to make sure that you're tracking any potential negative adaptations over the long haul. So in summary, PDs come with risk. And with those risks, we need to be able to understand how to manage them and what potentially some of our options are with working with a medical practitioner, in this case, a cardiologist, in order to kind of help us with preventing any negative adaptations that can occur. Make sure you're implementing regular testing. Make sure you're taking care of your lifestyle habits and make sure that you're tracking this over the long haul so that you can see where that trend is headed. And by doing this, you'll be able to extend your bodybuilding career, raise the ceiling of how high you get within your bodybuilding career because you'll be doing it in a better way and ultimately produce the best outcome on stage that you're physically possible of producing.